Good. Well, Ed Mansouri, welcome to Penn State, and I should say welcome back. Thank you so much. It's uh, wonderful to be back. It's so great to have you with us. So uh, you've been with us for a couple days now yes, sir. and sharing with us um, the kinds of initiatives that you're doing in, in Florida with UCompass and the mm -hmm. Educator product, and, uh, and now this really cool, exciting K-12 initiative called Weather STEM. So you're, you're innovating, and you're thinking about sort of the future of where um, education is going as a whole, and you've got this landscape, I think, that, that you're beginning to formulate that looks like um, a, a technology-supported, student-engaged um, environment. And I, I'm wondering what you might project that looks like, say, for us in five to seven years. What kind of an environment do you see us working in in education in a couple of years? Well, uh, as, as you mentioned, a lot of what we're doing is sort of in the K through 12 space. And what uh, is happening there is a lot of what are called one-to-one -one device initiatives, where the thought is um, put a digitally connected device in the hands of every student and have them carry it with, have them, carry it with them throughout the school day um, and perhaps have them take it home with them. So uh, it, it seems like there's some school districts uh, across the United States that are making bold moves toward the funding and the infrastructure required to accomplish that. And of course, if that student is digitally connected to their curriculum and their instructional process at all times, that opens up, um, I, I think, some tremendous opportunities. So uh, I do think there are some challenges to that, but I do think over the next five to seven years, I predict you're gonna see a lot of forward movement in that arena. So there's some new technology that's just been talked about. Uh, Apple is going to be introducing, I know there are other uh, vendors as well, this new uh, device, the, the wearable yes. watch mm -hmm. computers. This would be another one-to-one -one device, right? A student might get some sort of a wrist watch that is connected in, into the rest of their space. Sure, and, and, and I think what they would do with those devices is going to be a function of that device's form factor. Uh, obviously, you know, how much curriculum and interactivity can they really expect to do with a, a, a watch mm -hmm. size device mm -hmm. versus a phone versus a tablet for that mm -hmm. matter versus a laptop. Mm -hmm. So I, I think um, the, at the end of the day, I think um, the real question as to how much, what the value added proposition of the concept of a one-to-one -one device initiative is, is what are the supporting applications mm -hmm. and what is the supporting professional development sure. equipped to the teachers that is gonna determine what those students actually do with those devices. Mm -hmm. I know that back in 2007, the state of Maine issued MacBooks to all middle school students. Mm. And after about a year, they found for the most part, they were just playing games mm -hmm. and downloading music. Mm -hmm. uh, I know not too long ago, the Unified School District of Los Angeles issued iPads to all their students. And after a period of time, uh, it, it didn't seem, it, it seemed a little bit of the cart before the horse. Right. And um, I am a proponent of, when, when I talk to school districts, really have the plan figured out as far as what those devices are going to do to enhance the educational process versus just throwing money at the situation right. and putting these devices in kids' hands and then figuring it out later. Or hoping something. Hoping something magical about, yeah. will happen, yeah. I think it's, it's a great, great idea um, and I like I like that perception of the vision um, these these new technologies though and you raised a couple interesting points about you know faculty preparation mm -hmm. and and uh, costing and so forth and I'm so I'm wondering my second question for you has to do with maybe some of the barrier or challenges of us so if we think about five to seven years out students somehow either wearing technology or, or managing technology are going to be really connected into their environment. Sure. What do you see as some of the barriers that, that are, you know, might, might impede that kind of a vision? Well, I think the digital divide concept is mm -hmm. going to become even more prevalent because I think um, just at the end of the day, pure economics is, is wealthy school districts with a high tax base are likely going to have more capacities with which to put these devices in the mm -hmm. hands of these children. And more cash scrap districts are going to have, have more pressure to validate that expenditure, mm -hmm. especially if they're being acquired through tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we're already seeing this in, in the state that we operate primarily in, which is Florida. You're seeing some school districts like uh, Flagler County, which mm -hmm. is over on the East Coast, um, has, has a very well-rounded one-to-one device initiative. 
but there's other districts that haven't even haven't even op cracked open the book on that concept. So I, I do think mm. that that is a barrier because that might potentially impede the districts that are making a lot of progress because there might be policymakers that sort of put the brakes on them until the slower, less well-funded districts and environments are able to catch up. So I think that is a, that you know the economic aspects of it mm -hmm. is a barrier and um, you know we'll see what sort of programs mm -hmm. come forward to maybe help the less funded environments catch up so that they can all move forward more quickly right. so you know I want to I want to just pick up on a point though because uh, that's a subtle one and it came from your the answer to your first question and that has to do with um, how how do the students mm -hmm. potentially uh, present themselves as a um, as a challenge in all of this and, and here's where I'm going with that thought is you know we're talking about faculty preparation we're talking about the funding mechanisms and so forth but don't our students also um, present challenges in the the way they have to be skilled and trained to be th this active and, and engaged and, and connected learner well sure if, if you have a classroom where it's assumed that every kid has a digital device that they're going to bring with them in order to participate in the day-to-day -day conduction of the educational process, kids are kids. Mm -hmm. They're going to leave their devices home. They're going mm -hmm. to come and they're not going to be charged. Mm -hmm. They're going to download viruses onto them. They're going to drop them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that there is a whole level of preparation that needs to go into having contingency plans. Mm -hmm. Like what happens, you know, how do you power a large classroom of students the digital devices so you know you're seeing like uh, a lot if you go through the hallways of some of these schools that have some of these one-to-one -one device initiatives you'll see these special charging carts that have oh, these built-in batteries that they can wheel into different classrooms and they have a bunch of different AC outlets so and then of course you have you know power consumption issues and um, so, so there are a, a lot of expectations that would need to be brought forward to the student and the parent. Mm -hmm. If there is going to be a, you know, if, if the expectation of a digital device in the hands of a student is going to be as ubiquitous as having a pen and a pencil mm -hmm. and a piece of paper is mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of going on this idea, though, of... Um, Faculty are going to need to rethink what it means to teach sure. and to educate and to guide and facilitate. Students, though, are also going to have to change the way they see themselves. And maybe they'll do this more naturally because it'll be the environment they're placed in. But they're going to have to change as well from being consumers, mm -hmm. strictly consumers, being fed to being active and, and bringing something to the table as well, their own data or their own understanding of how to manage and manipulate that information. So oh, it's sure. going to be a very interesting and, ecosystem. Sure, right? and, and I think one of the exciting things when, when you talk about not just data but, but media, mm. because you know even, even sure. small mobile phone sized devices have movie recording studios. Yeah. So being able to have that at your fingertips and record something and share it in an educational discussion it is really exciting. Yeah. And the data aspects, another thing that I think will happen connected with this one-to-one -one digital device initiative is the emergence of probeware. Maybe toward the latter part of that five to seven year window, mm -hmm. but probes that enable science teachers to um, let their students collect data. So mm -hmm. connect a probe to their device collect data, and then have an opportunity to share that data in the scope of a classroom activity or discussion, that, that's really exciting. That's so really I, cool. I think it's one of those things that if, the, uh, if it's very well organized and very well planned and there are the proper contingency plans in place, it could be a very exciting landscape. That's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So my last question has to do with uh, leaders in sure. these environments in uh, K-12, to higher education, who are now going to be the recipients of these students, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming through their, their, these technology enhanced environments arriving into the higher education landscape. Do you see any unique um, challenges to the um, faculty, uh, to the uh, high, higher education administrators in terms of their skill sets, their understanding of how you manage? Because now you're talking about a very complex Sure. Ecosystem, if we can use that term. Well, I, I think that as you get into higher education and, uh, you know, disciplines become more specialized, 
I think the, the concept of having a one-size-fits-all mm. digital de device initiative sort of becomes unrealistic mm. because um, the needs of a student studying music mm. and the needs of a student studying engineering, they might require not just different software applications but different devices. Mm. So I, I think, um, you know, how, how you, like right now, of course, uh, a campus like Penn State, they have a Mac support division and a PC support division. What does that look like in the future as more and more kids come onto campus with digital devices, expecting them to be an integral part of the education landscape? Right. Do you have an Android division, an iOS division uh, that breaks down into iPhone, iPad division? So I, I think the logistics of supporting those devices that are going to become compulsory in the mm -hmm. education landscape, it, it presents a huge IT challenge. Um, I also think that you know, when you get into the application side of things, that's a whole other frontier. Like in going back to K through 12, you're seeing a, a whole new suite of software products for basically app management. So if you say, okay, our district is gonna be a one-to-one -one device district with the iPad as the core device. Well, what about the apps that have to be installed sure. for various courses? And what about licensing those apps and keeping them up to date? You know, you're seeing a whole suite of products developing that address that concern. Right, right, and I think right. when, you trend, when you move that into a more complex, more hierarchical environment like higher education, mm -hmm. I think you see a, a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on the IT side of things. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I, I see it as much messy as it is exciting mm -hmm. as far as opportunities. So messy being that these... Um these wonderful devices and a, and a kid may come in with one or two or three or six mm -hmm. different things sure. that now are connecting somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, multiply that by the number of students who are on campus. We've got roughly 45,000 students oh, here. Sure. The number gets enormous. Sure. So. And you may have a vendor that builds a great program for teaching music that focuses on Apple's platform. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a kid comes in with a Android device mm -hmm. and, well, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, you know, that's some of that messiness. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I still feel that with the capabilities of those things, to have a, a, a movie studio, a, a data collection environment, the world at your fingertips via the internet in your pocket, it, it just, presents tremendous opportunities that, that I didn't have, you know, when I was in yeah. the higher education yeah. environment. So I, I want to do one more question sure. for you, because this one just came to me. Uh, I, I happen to know that you're the parent of three very active uh, kids. Indeed. And um, so I'm wondering what, as a parent, mm -hmm. what do you see as your responsibility to help the, your, your kids be prepared to function and operate in this technologically well you know? I, I watched my two twins um, at the age the iPad came out before their first birthday and I watched them learn the about the world numbers colors shapes on the iPad mm. so um, and, and the same for my my son mm. who my, I have an autistic son mm. and there is a whole suite of apps that are specifically geared toward helping those students mm. That, that make uh, enable them to make wonderful progress. Mm. So I, I've I think it's been interesting to see it sort of automatically happen, mm. just by having the device available, without even having to encourage them. Just the natural gesture, mm. touching, and hearing sound and seeing color, uh, just just came very naturally to them. Mm. So I, I think that's exciting. That that. That's even more exciting when you think about that in the context of these one-to-one -one digital device initiatives, that these, are, these devices seem like they're almost natural extensions of our person. Right. And I don't know that parents are necessarily going to have, I think parents have to worry about keeping up with their kids. Yeah. I yeah. think, that, I think that, <laughs> that it's sort of the reverse. I don't sure. think there's a worry about you know, the, the parents having to encourage their students. Right. I think parents have to be good parents at reinforcing the basics, like don't forget the things you have to be responsible for. Um, don't forget to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Don't forget if you have to keep them charged, you know, make sure you plug them in before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I think those are the sorts of things that are in the same genre of, you know, make sure your kids brush their teeth, make sure they're eating good. Mm -hmm. So I think that just good old fashioned parenting sets the framework for helping kids develop the habits they need 
to reliably, reliably leverage these devices in a day-to-day -day educational context. So as a parent, when do you say, okay, that's enough technology for today, or how do you, how I, do you yes, balance I, that? I, I find myself saying that more and more. Mm. Uh, you know, we, one of the devices that is very exciting um, that is, I think, in the, on the peripheral of what we've been talking about is the, the Apple TV device. Mm. Uh, and Apple TV basically can replace a projector for, you know, because you can connect it to a TV or a flat panel and then you can project your computer onto it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, from a home entertainment system, you know, you can search the internet with it and mm -hmm. find content to play on your TV. So my toddlers, now small children, are spending a lot of time and, and I'm often on a day-to-day -day basis saying, all right, turn it off. Okay, so, um, and, and same with the iPad, so yeah. it, it's definitely, I've already started. Yeah. Like, let's get engaged with the real world yes. now, guys. Yes, go outside yeah. and play. Yeah, good. Okay, good. And, and my, as a software developer, I, I, I know a lot of software companies and products, they try to keep you in their product. Mm -hmm. They keep you in sure, there. But, sure. you know, my right. philosophy has always been, I'll say very frankly, my job is to make sure that you can spend the least amount of time in front of the software as possible mm -hmm. so that you can get in, get out, learn and teach as effectively as yeah. possible, and then get out and enjoy the real and world. And engage the real world. Yes. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, Ed, thank you so much for being with us. Thank I you. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. This enjoyed was, the conversation. I enjoyed the questions and the dialogue. And, uh, it, was, it was exciting. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.